So, you know, the conversations are complex online, and part of that is that you start out with these two strangers meeting in the dark kind of experience, you know, where somebody finds you either through Twitter or a web search or through a recommendation or a Facebook post or whatever it is, and often they've never heard of you and you have no idea who they are. And you have that kind of first touch experience you know, and I call that second sort of thing delivering initial value, and you know, it's kind of businessy, but I think it's, it sort of speaks to that kind of, you know, virtuous exchange that you're trying to have when you have a conversation, like somebody told you something funny or interesting, and you gave them a little emotional boost or a little wisdom or education that helps them. And because of that, you know, they sort of are thankful and they want to, you know, communicate and share something back with you. And, you know, as you do that, you deepen understanding of both parties. You get to know what they're interested in, they get to know what you're about. And if you can continually facilitate that engagement, you start to build a real connection and affinity with that person. And that's where people are willing to do more things like, you know, come to your event, you know, uh, share the, more of their personal information with you, you know, have a deeper connection. And then once you've started that, you know, maintenance is important. You know, I think everybody has had that friend who's had a life event or something and disappeared on them. And that's, that is, you know, sad and frustrating. And, you know, that kind of breaks the relationship a little bit. And this whole virtuous cycle, it's happening on the web or in digital communications at scale. You know, it's not one to one, it's, you know, hundreds of these at once. And so I think that's another, you know, sort of challenge for a lot of organizations is how do you actually scale, you know, personal relationships. And so if we uh, move on here, our approach to doing this is, uh, you know, to create a mental model of what your digital memory should look like. And, you know, at Parsons TTO, we call this engagement architecture. And that's really just a, a you know sort of fancy term for our methodology and our approach to how we organize data. And you know we think there are these sort of seven macro pieces of you know that interaction of that engagement. You know, and it starts at the uh, you know depending on where you look at, at the platform or data level. You know, um, platform people, processes, and strategy are a lot about your sort of capacity to sort of um, work with people. And experiences, engagement, and data are really the actual engagement you're having with those folks. And both of those things can either help hinder or you know, uh, accelerate the kind of connections you're building with people. Uh, next so if we talk a little bit about the left side, you know, the capacity for conversation, you know, I think this is one of the places where you start to think about how you structure your data. You know, I think that um, you know, platforms are often something that people focus on, like, oh, we don't have the right email platform or whatnot. You know, I think people are often something that people don't take into the equation as much and don't communicate out. I think that there's a, it's difficult sometimes and it's challenging to sort of talk about your capacity or your, uh, you know, expertise in different areas and to measure that and show people what could be done with more or less of that. And then business process plays in that too, how efficient things are. And often this can be things like sign off. Like, uh, you know, most people have had the experience of having something ready to go and then a CEO or somebody sees the creative and they're like, oh, that's not really how we want it to look and suddenly this, you know, multi-step complex operation trying to halt to do, you know, create outreach because we have to go through this process again. And then that comes up to strategy. I mean, it's not uncommon for groups to focus on the wrong part of their strategy. You know, when I say that, I mean that, you know, sometimes people are really worried about expanding the number of people who hear about the organization and they're not actually taking advantage of the people who they're meeting. And other times people have a really well-developed way to sort of engage with folks but it's a very insular community. They're not creating enough honor it for new people to become part of it. Um, yeah, and when we dive into the next piece, we can talk a little bit about, you know, the quality of conversation. And so, you know, experiences and engagement of data are really about how powerful and how engaging your interactions are with people. And, you know, I think it's useful to split out experiences and engagement. And I think experiences are a little bit capacity-based and a little bit what you're offering. You know, I think that, you know, one of the experiences that every minister is struggling with right now that's you know good to illustrate a point here is uh, events you know if you used to have in-person events or bring people in the organization or convene groups of experts together or anything like that that is all moving into the virtual world and creating a parity of experience there is difficult you know i think on some physical events people would treat people they take their coats they give them a coffee you know they kind of create this warm emotional experience of the physical interaction even for the people speaking or the people attending and how do you create a similar and, you know, welcoming virtual experience is, is difficult. And I think that, you know, that's a place where, you know, data could help explain to management what the change moment is, what the capacity need is, why even though hosting a virtual event is less work, it may not be in terms of creating the parity of experience. And I think that's an important part of the data picture, right? Because I think we all know those things, 
you know, sort of uh, subjectively, but how can you, you know, sort of prove that point out? And, you know, data is one of the pieces that tied to engagement experiences and kind of helps you figure